Hi, I'm Jim. I work here at the Wyoming State Museum in the collection section. And I've been doing some research on an object today, and it was, it was pretty interesting. And I thought that I would do a short video to talk about uh, the object itself and show you a little bit of what I found out about it. The object in question is this. This enormous lamp. You can't really tell from, from the video that I'm making, but it stands about five feet tall. It rotates really smoothly, as you can see. You can see how big my hand is on it, so it gives you some idea of the scale of the object itself. What this is, is an airport beacon. And it dates to the early part of the 20th century. This one came to us from the airport in Buffalo, Wyoming. And the history behind it is, is actually pretty cool. Not, the, not, in this, not behind this object itself, but in this type of object. Back in the 19-teens, um, airmail in Wyoming, or in the nation, was just kind of getting its start. And it was a pretty dangerous profession. About 10% of airmail pilots um, got into a crash that caused them grievous bodily harm or killed them. And that was just from flying during the day. The, the problem was it was just there was no light source uh, to navigate from one airport to the next during the, the late teens. But in the early 1920s, the U.S. Postal Service decided that it needed to have airmail pilots be able to fly at night because their, the, air mail, uh, the speed at which airmail was moving across the nation just wasn't good enough. And so there was a program that was undertaken to install about 1,500, actually 1,500 plus of these enormous lamps at airports across the nation so that pilots would have a safer way of navigating from point A to point B as they made their way from New York to Los Angeles or on any one of the, the numerous routes in between. Uh, it was just a safer way for them to be able to navigate, especially in bad weather. Well, this particular type of lamp would have sat on top of a tower that was about 50 feet tall, and it rotated about, I want to say, six rounds per minute. And that gave it the appearance of being a flashing light, even though it wasn't. And when you did actually see this, this lamp facing your direction, it would, it would give out uh, a power of about two million candle power, which is a pretty darn bright light. And that the, uh, in fact, the light was so bright, it could be seen on a clear evening. It could be seen from about 40 miles away, 40, 45 miles away. The airport up at Buffalo had three of these. And I believe that this was the last one that they still had intact up there, and they transferred it to the State Museum uh, a number of years ago. Now, if you'd like to see an artifact or a, a, a lamp, is what I should be saying. One of these lamps actually functioning. You can see a, a really cool video that was taken by a drone pilot of one in Dubois, Idaho. So if you go to YouTube and you type in Dubois Airport Concrete Arrow, it should pull up this short two minute video of one of these that's still functioning. Um, there are only a handful of these that still function across the United States. Most of them are long gone. The state of Montana, still maintains a number of their lights for uh, local pilots to find their way through, through the night sky. It's no longer maintained by the federal government. It's maintained by the state of Montana. And there are a couple of other places around the United States that maintain them just because they're interesting pieces of history. If you want to see one of these, uh, one of the towers that these originally stood on, I believe that there are still a couple in the state of Wyoming. But the, easy, the most accessible one, uh, to my knowledge, is actually right off of I-80 at Rock Springs. If you go past the, the Point of Rocks Conoco station there, the little travel station there, there's a tower that looks like it was made out of girders. Uh, it stands in the parking lot, and that is actually one of, these, uh, one of the towers that used to support one of these lamps. Now, that lamp, of course, from the Rock Springs sta uh, Conoco station is long gone, but the tower is still there. 
but again, there used to be about somewhere between 1,500 and 1,700 of these across the nation, uh, installed between 1922, 1923, up until the very early 1930s to, again, help airmail pilots get airmail from one side of the nation to the other. And once these were installed and pilots could fly at night, the average time to get a letter from New York to Los Angeles was 33 hours. Um, times have changed in less than 100 years. But these are coming up, these lamps are coming up to their 100th anniversary, as you can, and as you can see, a little side point here, there's a blue side to the light and a white side to the light. And you'll notice that in that YouTube video if you go and take a look at that. But these are up to, uh, like I said, these were going up to about, uh, these are about to their 100th anniversary. A lot of these were installed about 1925 to 1928. Some earlier, some a little bit later. But a pretty cool industry um, with, the, with the Air Maria pilots being some, some pretty brave folks to be out there flying in some pretty rickety planes across the United States, up over the Rocky Mountains in all kinds of weather, just to get some, some letters from point A to point B. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. Uh, it's, it's a really cool piece. If you have any questions about it, feel free to email me here at the Wyoming State Museum. That would be jim.allison at yo.gov. And I'll be happy to try and answer any questions you might have about one of these early airmail beacons. This one in particular from the Buffalo Airport here in Wyoming. Thanks for watching.